I want to thank Brilliant for sponsoring this video. There's this basic principle in the productivity community. Time management is everything. Your obsession over calendars, the Eisenhower matrix, planners, lists, and so forth is a direct reflection of this. But is time management really the best and most foundational principle we should look at in order to become more productive? I found this quote from a book called The Power of Full Engagement. Performance, health and happiness are grounded in the skillful management of energy. The number of hours in a day is fixed, but the quantity and the quality of energy available to us is not. It is our most precious resource. The more we take responsibility for the energy we bring to the world, the more empowered and productive we become. The thing is, we only have 24 hours a day. You may manage your time throughout those 24 hours, figuring out exactly what you want to do each hour of the day. But really, will you be at your full potential during those 24 hours? For instance, will your output while working between 9am and 10am be the same as your output if you decided to work between 9 and 10 p.m. after a heavy workout? This reasoning here is the basic premise of energy management. Although time management is full of good intentions, it can't truly really answer a lot of the externalities that happen throughout the day. Also, time management ends up promoting hustling, finding more time and managing it better to work more and work harder all the time. And you know, I really do not believe in hustling. Step number one in managing your energy effectively is prioritizing in your schedule your high energy hours. Breaking news, you don't have to be a morning person in order to be productive. A morning person isn't blessed with unlimited productivity. A morning person is simply able to allocate most productive time in the morning than the rest of the day. As simple as that. If you aren't naturally inclined to do most of your best work in the morning, there's no need to pressure yourself to completely change your natural rhythm and routine in order to please whatever productivity principle you think you need to please. Also, it really doesn't matter if your interval of max productivity is short. Your energy is naturally limited, and it's supposed to be, unless there's an underlying health issue you need to address. Respect your natural amount of energy, and you'll respect your body and your mental health as well. As such, the key here is to strategically allocate hard, complicated or creative tasks to your best hours. If you don't know when your best productive time occurs, don't fret. All you have to do is start paying attention and recording at what time you do your best work. Over a few days or weeks, you'll notice a pattern. And that pattern can be regular though, and it's supposed to be irregular. For instance, in some days, you may produce your best work between 9 and 11 am, other times between 10 and 12. That interval can change over time, although it usually doesn't change dramatically. If you have a more irregular pattern of productivity, just try to schedule things for that interval in general instead of scheduling by the minute. To replenish your energy, you should be able to fully engage and fully disengage. I talk about this all the time on this channel, but basically this means that when you're working, you should be working very hard, you should be focused and trying your best to feel motivated, with a clear goal ahead. Then, when it's time to disengage, you should allow yourself to really, really relax and do something you enjoy. The principle here is that you should try to live an oscillatory life instead of a linear one. There's an article at NJ Life Hacks that approaches this issue in a very simple way. Most of us view breaks as a sign of weakness, and instead we work in a state of constant energy preservation for hours and hours on end. Even if we are tired and can barely concentrate anymore, we just keep going and going. Of course that, in most cases, you'll not be able to do all of your work during your most productive time. Unfortunately, that's not how life works, and if you're like me, you're gonna have to work at least 7 or 8 hours every single day. If that's your case as well, the main recommendation according to energy management principles 
is to have more fully engaged breaks. This will allow you to replenish your energy and avoid falling into that state of constant energy preservation. Accumulating tasks with no clear plan on how to tackle them is surely the best way to completely deplete your energy and ensure you're going to feel stressed, unmotivated and totally, totally overwhelmed. To manage your energy correctly, make sure you're avoiding, first of all, task switching. Basically, anytime you switch between different tasks without reaching their completion, you're doing a poor allocation of your energy. That's because switching your mindset between different tasks and tapping into different sources of information is actually more demanding than you may think. Doing it multiple times per day will ensure you'll feel exhausted and it will be very difficult to produce high quality work. And just like task switching, avoid multitasking. Multitasking has the exact same issues of task switching, but it's even worse because you switch between mindset and information even more often than with task switching. Energy cycles are not only daily, they can be weekly, monthly, and even seasonal. Energy management has a lot to do with your ultradian rhythm. Ultradian rhythms are biological cycles occurring within 24 hours and they are responsible in part for your energy peaks and your slumps throughout the day. There's a book called The 20 Minute Break that talks a lot about the ultradian rhythm. In an interview with the author, he describes that the relation between the ultradian rhythm and productivity is very simple. The basic idea is that every hour and a half or so you need to take a rest break. If you don't, you may be well on your way to the ultradian stress syndrome. You get tired and lose your mental focus. You tend to make mistakes, get irritable and have accidents. If you continue to ignore your need to take a break, you can experience more and more stress until you actually get sick. The interesting thing in the cycle of energy, of productivity, is that it doesn't necessarily occur only daily. In fact, we as humans, students, workers, we are subject to many different cycles, as our time and energy are determined by a lot of different conventions. The time you go to bed, the weekend, your yearly vacation, a monthly holiday, the seasons, and so on. As such, it's perfectly natural that your energy varies not only throughout the day, but throughout the week as well, the month and even the year. Although most productivity literature prefers to convey the idea that daily routines are key to efficiency, I think we need to cut ourselves some slack, as the day and night cycle aren't the only things that determine our energy. If you feel particularly down during a certain month of the year, or if you feel like your energy isn't the same during a particular season, just allow yourself to rest and cut back on your own self-imposed demands for a bit. You have time to get back to it in no time. So my final tip to manage your energy correctly, and I admit this one is a bit conceptual, is to stop thinking of yourself as lazy whenever you are in a slump. The problem with the word lazy is not what it really means, but rather what we tell ourselves it means. You're not a bad person or unwilling to work because you're low in energy, and your mind and your body aren't acting as you want them to act. You're not a bad person because you have mental health issues and can't get out of bed in the morning. The word lazy is defined in some places as disinclined to activity or exertion, not energetic or vigorous and other places like not willing to work or use any effort. These are completely different definitions and they point to completely different sources of the problem. That's why you should avoid thinking of yourself or others as lazy, because not being energetic doesn't mean you are unwilling to use any effort or do any work. Discipline and productivity do not reflect your value as a person. Sometimes you just need to heal and give yourself some time and just put aside other things in the process. This is necessary and should be defended instead of frowned upon. So never call yourself lazy please and don't berate yourself for lack of energy. 
Another thing that really boosts my energy is just learning new things. And although I'm a huge believer that you can start learning new things and developing new habits any time of the year, January is that type of motivational month that feels perfect for this. Today we talked a lot about managing your energy and your trading rhythm. And if you want to experience different concepts and record your energy levels better, you can take this Statistics 1 course on Brilliant, which will give you hands-on experience designing experiments and framing questions for statistical analysis. All in all, knowing more about statistics can help you make better decisions and will allow you to see over time the impact of those decisions. As I was saying, you can take this statistics course with Brilliant, which is a website and app that is free for you to try out and which makes learning interactive, accessible and fun. Their approach is based on problem solving and active learning. It's about seeing concepts visually and interacting with them so that they stick. Their courses are laid out like a story and broken down into pieces so that you can tackle them a little bit at a time, which as you know is the best way to approach and successfully complete your projects. Basically, Brilliant is a great platform to develop and foster a long-term commitment to learning, which is basically everything we promote on this channel. Just get started on your learning journey and pick a course based on what you're interested in. If you make a mistake, no big deal. Just check out the explanations to find out more. You can learn at your own pace and there is something for everybody. Whether you want to brush up on the basics of algebra, learn programming or learn about cutting edge topics like cryptocurrency. All you have to do to sign up for Brilliant is clicking the link down below and I hope you enjoy this video and I'll see you next week. Bye guys!